Senator Heikamp. So, Senator Johnson, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd kind of like to pick up where Senator Coburn left off here. Uh, I think it is obvious the reason uh, we're making any progress is because of the sunshine, you know, the, the, the fact that these were some pretty egregious examples and, and the public found out about it. So, uh, and also, uh, uh, Director Colbert, coming from the private sector, you understand the value of information. So uh, we started going down the path. Uh, uh, Mr. Tangolini, you talked about the tools the GSA has been developing. Uh, any other agencies using those tools? I'm not sure whether other agencies are using precisely what we are. I do know agencies have dramatically increased the amount of tracking they're doing around conferencing, in part to respond to the requirements for reporting associated with the various OMB memorandum, as well as um, the changes in the federal travel regulations. So, Ms. Colbert, how, how can we, if we've got some good tools in one agency, how can we pretty well force other agencies to use those tools that, that work? Um, one of the roles that we play at OMB is to try and share these practices and best practices. For example, through discussions at the Chief Financial Officers Council, for example, we've talked about the savings in some of these tools. We encourage dialogue between individual agencies that they've developed tracking mechanisms and the like. Some of the tools that Administrator Tanglerini mentioned about, for example, the availability of federal conference space are shared across agencies. So for us, one of the key purposes is to sustain this dialogue and help work with individual agencies and help encourage the bilateral conversations okay, to make that happen. But in talk, encourage, what, what about management forcing? I mean, what, what about actually directing people to use something that works so that we save the taxpayer money? I mean, is there any action on, no, this, this thing works, this is back, best practice we're seeing in this agency, let's use it in the other agencies. I mean, is there action to, to, to do that? In travel and in other commodities, for example, that is what we're doing through the Strategic Sourcing Council in putting those mechanisms in place, getting not just the forcing but also the transparency so people understand the benefits they get from moving to these mechanisms, and that's the work of that council going forward. So we're publishing these conferences that exceed half a million dollars on individual agency websites, correct? Yes, greater than $100,000. Excuse me, $100,000. Uh, would it make sense? Is, is there a better way to highlight that? Should we accumulate all that and put that out there on, on an annual report and maybe through the committee? Or, I mean, would that be more effective to, you know, rather than have a kind of, I wouldn't say hidden, but certainly diffuse, you know, how, how about accumulate all those, uh, all that information, publish one report, have the administration uh, highlight it, have Congress highlight it so that uh, all the agencies understand that if they're going to spend more than $100,000, Americans are going to understand that. Sure. When we uh, put in place the executive order, we concurred that transparency was important. That was a key element of the order. And we welcome the opportunity to work with you and others to think about the best way to ensure that there is real visibility of that information. And so we would be happy to have a dialogue and approaches to do that. Okay. I, I would suggest that. Certainly in the private sector, if I needed to uh, make sure there was greater efficiency in particular department, particular department uh, we did it with their budget. I mean, we forced efficiency. Are we doing that within the agencies? In other words, you know, a, a really good way to make sure they tighten up their travel and their conference spending is not give them as much money. The guidance in the executive order was a 30 percent reduction in administrative spend. We've seen agencies take that and achieve against that level. We've seen spending come down in fiscal 12 and fiscal 2013. And so we think they all feel that pressure and are tr working within their budgets to manage that appropriately. The needs for travel are different from one agency to the next, but we have seen a consistent reduction across agencies in their spend on these topics. It was one of the questions I had because I saw the goals of reducing administrative costs by 20 percent, then conference spending by 30, and I got some numbers, but I didn't get the, well, this is where the start, starting point was, here is the ending point, and here is the actual percent, the, do, do, the dollar. Do you have that information? Um, I can give you the numbers for travel spend, and we would be happy to provide you um, post this hearing more, more of the detail that is available. Are, are you coming from the private sector as frustrated as I am in terms of the lack of good, solid, basic financial information to be able to, to, to make these decisions to, in, in order to drive these types of uh, performance improvements? Getting the kind of data both on actual costs, cost per unit is something we are continuing to work towards. Travel spending of the things I have looked at actually is a place where it is tracked reasonably clearly. So we can track, for example, that the spending on travel in 2010 was, you know, 
was it 17 billion and, and the drop that's occurred. So this is a place where there actually is relatively better transparency. How much more information do you need, though? I mean, we're, we're on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of uh, information available to you as a manager trying to tighten up budgets, trying to tighten up these, uh, these policies. How good information do you have within these agencies? Um, the, it varies by agency. I don't have that detail yet. Which are the, which are the bad agencies? Which, which are the ones that really need the most improvement, that just don't have the information, that, that aren't following best practices? Uh, Senator, I haven't been able to go through this agency by agency in the time that I've been here yet. But we're continuing to work that I know the shared services or strategic sourcing range are places where we're trying to get that information out there and increase that visibility. Okay. Um, w what else can force action? Mr. Tangolini, just what, what else can really drive this process, as, as Senator Coburn said, if, when we're not looking at this, if public turns attention off it, if we don't have another Star Wars video um, or Star Trek video, what is going to continue to force action? No, I, I think you've really uh, put, your, put your finger right on it. It really is transparency and it's clear uh, financial management. Uh, you know, I, I think at some level you can't uh, legislate common sense. You can't require common sense. You just have to apply common sense in managing these organizations. And I think you know we had to have a real solid dose of it. We have now. We set a budget last year that was less than a third what we had spent in FY15, and we made it our goal to come under that budget. We did. We're taking those savings and we're putting it back into our critical mission, which is providing the facilities, the acquisition, the technology that allow agencies to save money and deliver their mission. So I, I think we have to uh, make sure we do uh, create, while we have the opportunity, the systems and the structures uh, that allow then people to uh, apply good managerial judgment and common sense and, and make sure we get the outcomes where we need. Then just one quick final question, because I, I agree, there, there can be some real value in these conferences. You know, the, the social interaction, the person-to-person the -person contact can, can be highly valuable. So my last question for you, Director Corbett, are you hearing complaints from agencies where our drive to create efficiencies is actually doing damage, where we're, we're maybe tightening down too, where we've actually, there's been a downside? I think the restrictions we've put onto place have forced some very tough conversations about whether they are able to have the kind of in-person interactions they need, whether, for example, restrictions on the number of people going um, in, in an effort, appropriate effort to manage the budget is perhaps uh, creating, creating challenges for perhaps the more junior individuals who don't get that chance to interact. But I think those are the right conversations for agencies to be having. It's the right conversation to be thinking about who should attend, how do we share knowledge better, how can we substitute in other ways. Um, for example, when faced with restrictions on travel, the National Institute of Health started holding some of their peer reviews via video conference. That saved them money, but it also in some cases enabled them to get access to individuals that otherwise would have been tough to, tough to reach. So I think we are having the right conversations. I think the issue you raise is an important risk that we have to watch carefully. But I think today the right conversations are taking place and good decisions are being made. Okay. Well, again, thank you for your testimony, your efforts. We really are making some solid progress here. It's really good to see you. I want to make sure it continues. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.